Yeah, kind of uh, Baroque. Yeah, delicate. I couldn't tell whether it was a bazooki or some kind of harpsichord. Oh, I really should have gone with the whole <laughs> I'll, I'll play a harpsichord like this. That's a harp. Oh. Harpsichord. What's a bazooki? I think harpsichord is where you play it over and it becomes a yeah, it's like a an early piano. Like yeah. a sitter. Oh, hang on. A sitter. No. No, a sitter. No, We're on a sitter. journey. This is the Cars Guide Mal podcast, <sighs> not the anyway, music it's, guide. Yeah. It's more um, fuel for that discussion about the walk-on song, you know, our, our welcome yeah, music. Yeah, I think... Yeah. Um, I don't know whether we're getting closer, although that was an interesting investigation. Uh, on, on my occasional trips here, it seems to be getting worse. Okay, look. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Cars Guide podcast, where we tear down, pressure test and rebuild the issues of the automotive week. I'm James and with me are Peter. Hello. And Mal. This week, among other things, we'll look at a couple of Fords, very new and very different, lots of fresh metal from Germany and a sad departure. But first, must watch. Well, the, the dear leader, the dear leader Elon, has been um, super quiet this week. Um, his Twitter feed has mainly been retweets mm. of you know other people's stuff and suck up comments to journos that have driven the Model 3 twin motor and liked it. So he's been retweeting praise, the he's, that well, ultimate sin. He's had a little mm. bit of stuff to say about the boring company and tunnelling here and there, yeah. but and other things about Mars and alleged you know discovery of water on Mars and what that'll mean for when he lives there and all that stuff. Uh, but analysis. mainly, you Are know... struggling for material. <laughs> Motor Trend uh, tested the Model 3 with the two motors. Um, Dan Neal at the Wall Street Journal quite liked the car. So, of course, Elon, you know, this is part of his reply. Mm. Thanks, Dan. You're a tough reviewer. So this means a lot coming from you. Please let me know even smallest nuance that can be improved. I didn't oh, realise the oh. Wall Street Journal did car reviews. That's, anyway, that's also do. going to be a long list. But I mean, that's a total suck up because Isn't if it? someone takes a crack at the car, he's just all anger, fire, and brimstone. Well, he but if you like the, the car, oh, let me know. I want yeah, your feedback. Yeah. yeah, you don't really want the feedback, <laughs> um, in my opinion. <laughs> also, we've got to uh, say that earlier this year, we said um, in March that John Thompson from Vilas Capital Management, he'd mm. predicted that Tesla would be bankrupt by now. So three, three or more months down the track. Mm. We reported that and we said we'd keep an eye on it. So egg on your face, Johnny boy. Yeah. Uh, Tesla is in fact still in business. Didn't seem likely, did it? Didn't, but it is. But we'll reflect on it next week. Exactly. Yeah. That's to be correct. <laughs> well, move. you know, to that end, Bloomberg Tracker, Model 3 production, 2825. Mm. Oh, who so would have thought we're not there yet? No, no so, uh, you know, Tesla a couple of weeks ago claimed the 5,000 in a week. I've yep. got to say that the Bloomberg Tracker that's been a fairly consistent yardstick right the way through has never got to 5,000. Oh. So Tesla may say 5,000. I'm sure they're able to justify it six ways to Sunday. But this kind of using consistent data has never got to 5,000. And mm. it's currently at 28.25. So. I had a look at the tent this week. And it doesn't seem to have um, all sides covered. The so. wedding marquee? Yeah. yeah. Maybe they should enclose it and that would help productivity. Don't know. Could do. Could do. <laughs> maybe, someone's, anyway, you know. maybe the union could get involved, but his girlfriend doesn't like the union. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And well, she might. It's just that she keeps deleting the tweets saying she doesn't like them. And uh, Peter. Hello. This week, just gone, mm. you've been driving a new Ford Focus. Give yes. us the highlights. What's, what's the thumbnail? Um, look, it's... It's a big step up from the old car, which is impressive because the old car was pretty good. It had a dreadful interior. Um, it was um, a button fest, the old interior, and not in a good way. Um, so, in fact, there were so many buttons, Ford was able to cut half of them out. Just just half the buttons gone like that. Right. So it's a much calmer place to be. Very i30 inside, yep. which is you know, not, not having a crack at all. It's really both have got really... And I've had a series of i30s before, so I'm kind of like, oh, this looks familiar. Um, drives really well. Um, Ford talked a lot about reducing friction in gearboxes. and. But, but just to hold mm. you there, do you think in all seriousness that Ford is taking its lead from Hyundai or is that just a, a kind of category-wide trend towards a certain look and feel? Do you think Ford was influenced uh, by Hyundai? Very much a category-wide. Okay. Uh, because yeah. the, the, you know how they're, how they're all doing this thing where it looks like you can take the screen with you? It's They're all doing that now, let's face it. So, But, but for it, good reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, one of the things about the car is it feels a lot bigger inside. It, it is slightly bigger, but they've pushed the dash away from the front seat occupants. There's okay. the wheelbase. 
um, it's it, it feels quite it, it it feels bigger even though it isn't massively bigger but it's usefully bigger yep. so in reality so there's a bit more leg room in the back very comfortable the ST line was really good so what the, engines in that so they all got the 1.5 litre triple yeah, which uh, works very well it's a very good engine current it, model yep it's and another two kilowatts also good in the escape yep yep very good engine it actually reminds me a lot of the Peugeot 1.2 litre turbo triple. Very mm-hmm. good. Both very good engines. Um, the eight-speed automatic is so much better than the power shift. That was such a bad transmission. Um, it had a six-speed torque converter. It also had a six-speed torque converter. But the power and shift disappeared a couple of years it ago. It did. It did. But so. that's all people remember the Focus for. Yeah. Yeah. Fair um, point. So that's gone. It's an eight-speed auto, uh, yep. replacing the previous six-speed. When not yep. getting the manual, I did drive the manual ST line. Um, that was very good. Uh, the suspension on that is really impressive. So we didn't get to drive the... Uh, trend or titanium spec that we're getting which has a different rear suspension it has yep. the, the torsion beams from the Fiesta ST and there it is Peoples uh, uh, yeah and look, so it's uh, designed by Australian Jordan Demq. yep um, who is actually really good fun to talk to oh, but good. he also designed the FGX that was his last job for Ford Australia in fact he moved oh, on to Ford really? of Europe so quickly he didn't even see the launch of the FGX wow okay yeah. because for what it's worth I thought the FGX was really attractive yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. it was a, good, a great job and we had yeah. a really interesting conversation about the genesis of the design of that car and um, wow some stuff that I'm going to have to take to my grave but <laughs> <laughs> right, they're very proud of it though they are and they yeah. should be because it was a, a striking looking vehicle mm. um, this obviously isn't striking this is very mainstream it's, it's quite it's, curvaceous though it's a bit coke bottle-ish for a it five is. door hatch and you'll notice that there's a lot of elements from other cars in it I don't know if it's deliberate or not but you know the rear doors there look very much first gen one series um, yep. the the uh, Hofmeister, Hofmeister kink, and that actually it's functional. It, gives, it make it removes that six light structure because that it, it also has a little bit of early one series uh, BMW in yeah. terms of the proportions. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. proportions of general very much profile. So. Yeah. yeah, so the one of the reasons it looks that way, like it looks cab back, is because the the base of the windscreens come in almost ten centimeters. Right, oh, that's a long way to move it out. Uh, uh, yeah, right. An A pillar. A la Mazda. Have yes. they done that for crash safety? Do you think? Um, no, I don't. Well, they didn't say that, but it could be that. Mm. Uh, so this is a clean sheet. This is on the new C2 platform, which is what I guess you'd call Ford's answer to VW's MQB. Mm. Um, and it's most of the cars, well, they're all lighter, between 50 and 80 kilos lighter, depending, yep. 88 kilos lighter, depending on the spec. Um, we're only getting three, no diesels, no manuals. And when? Uh, November. November. Yeah. Looks quite grown up. It does. It, it, the, the other car was pretty wild. Mm. Uh, for a mainstream car and both inside and out much more grown up really nice to drive like we had pretty smooth roads where we were uh, so until we get it on our crap roads yeah. we're not really going to know damn you roads. Europe <laughs> well <laughs> so a couple of Monte Carlo running <laughs> stages let's Fantastic. be frank yeah that was fun no I was, I was just going to I was just going to um, move us on to another Ford product mm. uh, that is very very close uh, to arrival and our, our own adventure editor Marcus Clark, uh, Marcus Clark, Clark. Marcus Craft. <laughs> it's a street, Clark. It's yeah. a street in the city of Canberra. Anyway, <laughs> you well, and a person. But yes, um, <laughs> Crafty <laughs> had a go up in the Northern Territory uh, for a prototype car, so very close to production. And uh, Mel, you had to, had something to say about this car. Yeah, so that was what it actually was is the international launch of the Raptor, and mm. for once it was held in Australia, which yeah. is great. Yeah, so. Yeah. Marcus just toddled on up to Darwin for three days As you do. and drove the car on a variety of surfaces. Now, the big question mark with the Ranger Raptor is two-litre engine, 10-speed auto. It's a lot of gears. Is it enough? Is it too many <laughs> it's gears? It's enough gears. <laughs> uh, and look, we are so excited about the looks of this thing. It does look good. It looks... I'm not even a fan of this sort of stuff. Like but I what you would like lot. to do to a Ranger straight mm. out of the box. Mm. Mm. Uh, you'll have to read the review on the site, but Crafty found the two-litre somewhat lacking. Yeah, he had mm. some reservations, so... Yeah. It seems as though some of the, the naysayers may have had some naysaying in the in the right part of the world. And, you know, it would seem that there is no dis- replacement for displacement. Yeah. So, like Mel says. <laughs> as yeah, someone says, yeah. It needs a donk, does it? Yeah. And it also needs... Well, um, more of a donk, I think. <laughs> and it needs AEB. Uh, oh, it definitely needs it that. Doesn't, it doesn't so what's the excuse regular? for no AEB? Yeah, there are other uh, Ranger the models ranger that have AEB. Have um, and, the, you know, the, the, the claim is that this car will have it soon. So if you're an early Ranger Raptor buyer 
you're, you're not getting AEB, so you're first in the queue, but mm, can you, it you don't get that. Can I say, sure. based on the performance of uh, most dual cab ute drivers on the M2, I don't think they're really <laughs> going to care about AEB, yeah. but they should yeah. <laughs> for the people they're following. Yeah, but I, I think also just the tone of it, Crafty, was a bit of a nudge, nudge, wink, wink, you know, don't be surprised if you see something else under the bonnet yeah, um, yeah. in the not too distant future. So interesting. I would love for it to at least be the 3.2 litre five cylinder. That would be fine. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. we'd also love to see the twin turbo V6 petrol. Yep. We expect America to get. But oh, let's bring back the 2.5 five cylinder. I reckon. Put the focus, old Focus ST in there. Make, oh, it, make it, it warble. It'd sound glorious. Nah, I reckon and use 40 litres per 100 k's. Yes. 351 Clevo. <laughs> well, ma- not an LS1. No, 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 no. It's got to be. I'd say oh, that's a bit limp wristed. Come 351. On. Well, the Clevo then. <laughs> All right. Now, I last week was unable to tell anybody what it was like to drive the AMG. And you can see C63. the frustration on your face in that photo. He's uh, really upset, doesn't he? Um, really upset. C63, yes. And I can tell you now, very mm-hmm. simply, it goes like stink. It's yes. dynamically really terrific. And the new nine speed auto is fantastic. Is so. it as Larry as the old one? It's loud, really loud. No, no, but I mean to drive. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the dialable traction control on the wheel, it's just like a little colour oh, wheel. Oh, style. Oh, uh, yeah. you can dial it up or down. Taken from the GT, I think. Yeah, well, no doubt. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was funny because during the launch, the cars that we drove on the road did not have that feature enabled. <laughs> but on the private test facility, yes, because it was one of the last things to absolutely be signed off oh, on the car. Wow. So. Um, speaking to one of the engineers, he said, yeah, look, it's just one of those things that takes time. And, oh, so it may not... Oh, yeah, no, it'll definitely happen. Uh, right. It's just it hadn't happened at the time of that launch. Um, cool. So, I mean, just just for people who haven't driven both of them, mm-hmm. the M4 is more of a precision tool, isn't it? Whereas this is quite a, a, about fun, like oh, just a, flat out it's fun. A brute. It? Yeah. 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 It's a brute. Yeah, it's a brute. It's it's um, a muscle car. Yeah, yeah. But in the German... In the German way of, yeah, yeah, yeah. of the thing. It, yeah. It's from an engineering point of view, it's pretty impressive. Mm. Um, it's beautifully put together, mm. and there's the prerequisite amount of you know Ben's luxury in there. Yeah. So it, if that's it's horsepower what, metric, ah, uh, it it's fun. It's a lot of fun, and for the people, the target market for that car, this one, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. They'll love it. Cool. Mm. They'll love it. I'll expect to hear a lot of. Did you drive the RS4 Avant we had a couple of weeks ago? No, but I've driven the RS5. Uh, in coupe form, which I think is the same powertrain. Much the same. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Same no, setup. I, I think this one's, I don't know, it was a little time between the two, but... Boy, They're quite different. I mean, that's real yeah. drive and yeah. nuts. The other, so. the other big thing, the new, the updated C63S gets is the, it's another sort of step ahead with the adaptive suspension. Correct. So, yeah, it mm. is. So it's, it's, I'm keen to see if it's as capable of ironing out the bumps as the E63S. Well, steel, steel springs, but with adaptive dampers yeah. and, you know, Germany is just a ridiculously prosperous and well-organized country, and mm-hmm. their roads are mm, the best in the world. Yeah. Mm. So, <laughs> all, all you all you find yourself doing is going, "Gee, this car rides beautifully." <laughs> um, so, yes, it'll be quite telling to get it onto. Because I find roads. the current one a bit harsh. So yeah. It'll be interesting to see if this is any better. Yeah. They so have tweaked it, so it could be. Let's find out. It runs on 19s, and uh, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. But yeah, we'll see yeah. when it lands locally. Right. But speaking of cars, people love. Mm. Now it's time from a wor- for a word from a national treasure. Two words from Winton to the 2018 competition. You lose. More thunder this year from the Aussie legend that's taken the performance world by storm. It's a piece of street art honed in a tough neighbourhood. Bathurst. Aero efficiency holds the Winton Turbo down, but nothing holds it back. Talk of the devil, the upgraded Redback two-stroke V9 Turbo now howls with even more power and is backed up by an even smoother evolution of Winton's own torque tumbler transmission. There's a Winton for every purpose except standing still, and you deserve a car this good. The 2018 Winton Turbo. One look says a lot, one drive says it all. Information not based on facts. Allow six to eight months for delivery. Not intended for highway use. Store in a cool, dry place. Actual results may vary. Do not use if seal is broken. Dry clean only. Keep frozen until ready to use. Remember to dial before you dig. That's, now, okay, that's, that's a that, thing. That raises the question. It doesn't. 
you know, Winton, what can you say? What haven't we said already? I suppose there's much more. <laughs> well, but we're still just Frosty. as far from Albury as was last week. Where's we'll be, our mate? We'll our be mate. forced to make it up, I think. Friend of the program, Frosty Chops. Mm. He's been around. He's been around the place. Last we heard he was organising the Winton Festival of Speed, which is, you know, happening very shortly. Mm. But also, you didn't hear it from me, but he's been in the background. It was announced today that uh, Nine Network and Fairfax uh, emerged. He was a uh, kind of backroom Did he grease the wheels? networker in the yeah, I absolutely. thought he'd been greasing the wheels in the tent at Tesla. Look, That's how they hit 5,000. He's a mover and shaker. He is, isn't he? Well, he's... Put they put a bit of a target on wind and turbo production as right. well, five thousand a week. Yeah, they're at about sixteen at this stage. So Frosty's feeling bullish. Sixteen thousand? No, no, sixteen years. Oh right, I was going to say that, that, um, is, that is an overachievement. So look, no one knows media, digital publishing, and how to close a deal better than Frosty. So he was there in the boardrooms, and uh, big tip of the tip of the hat to him. He's mm. been uh, he's been up to that. So good on you, Frosty. We will get him in here one day. Um, he promises. He still promises. Yeah. Uh, talk. But on other matters, BMW's M2 competition is now a reality oh, yes, for yes, Australia. Yes. Oh, that's Oops. not that's not that. <laughs> there we are. So the competition pure for mm. 2018 cut price M car to cost less than a hundred k. That's so impressive. This ripping little ripping little car for less than hundred thousand dollars now. Mm. For most people, hundred thousand dollars, a lot of money. A lot of money. Uh, for that kind of performance and that kind of really taut little package, um, it <laughs> seems like reasonable value for money. All of well, a sudden. Well, so let's let's look at this very quickly. So you can get the current, you can get the normal M2 for between ninety three and ninety nine, depending on what you want. This fits in the middle of those two, has another turbo, more power, oh, yeah. the same torque as an M4 Pure. Right. But quite a few less kilos. You bet. This thing's going to be an absolute rocket. Well, the current one. Oh, I love the brilliant. current one. It's just the most and amazing car. I love in, it. In chatting before the show, so the current M2 normally has the single turbo version of that 3 litre 6. M55. So this, along with the previous competition car, had tw- two turbos so on it. So the S55. Right. Turbo, so this has yeah. the two turbos. So now it... It pretty much has the M3, M4 engine. You know what? It, yeah. When you think about that 1M coupe that Oof. was such a bulldog, you know, and and frankly wasn't that well sorted in terms of w- <laughs> when you got it up to its limit, particularly on a circuit. It was a bit wild, wasn't it? It was wild. It mm. was unpredictable wild. Um, you're starting to put power through this thing that puts me in the same frame of mind. It would be very interesting to well, drive see, it on a track. The M2 is really lively as it is, and I reckon that car kind of sparked M back into, oh, actually, we can make fun cars mm. because the M4 CS feels a lot like it, mm-hmm. whereas the, 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 the standard M4 still feels a little bit leaden. I mean, it's still a great car, but you think well, there's a bit more in this. Yes. And then you drive the new M5, which will swing out to 45 degrees without you thinking about it, yeah. but safely, happily. But only if you ask it to. But though. only if you ask it to. That's exactly right, because if you have it in all-wheel drive sport, you cannot unstick that thing unless you're a complete numpty. Yeah. Um, and and these, that, that seems to be what Emma's found. They've found this really nice line between too wild and boring. Yes. But boring good. Yes. Uh, and I think they were, they, were, they, was, they were kind of edging more towards that in year, past years, I felt, towards a more of a benign Audi feel. Right. It was very safe and very fast, mm. but there's some fun back in it. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Mm. I, you know, when you think to a, an 80s E30 M3, mm. you know, uh, how pure and light and kind of delicate that yeah. car is compared to... Uh, an M4. You know, a, a and twi- even the last a, M5. The last M5, yeah. say a 2016 M5, mm. it felt quite remote. Mm. You know, so... It's almost as if M, uh, the M BMW thing was drifting away from its reason for being. Yeah. Mm. And I know I rabbit on about the E60 M5 a lot. It was heading that way as well. It had this amazing... Because Peter used to own one, used to own one. in case you didn't know that. Uh, it used to have this monster V10 in it, but the rest of the car didn't really have that same character. So it was kind of like an engine looking for a car. I still loved it and everyone who drives it goes, actually, it is pretty good. But this, the new M5 and the M2 and the M4CS all have this playfulness that, that had gone. Can I say, I think mm. it's just classic management of expectations uh, mm. in that the competition is replacing the regular M2 yeah. in the same way that the M3 and M4 yeah, competition yeah, replaced yeah. the regular M3 and M4. Yeah. Interestingly, the M5 competition is arriving just months after the M5. But that's um, a different strategy though. That's yeah, the, like their strategy is different. Make. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but um, so it's, it strikes me as well. You know how niche Let's niche cars, you know the. <laughs> 
They sell, then they drop off. Yeah. Uh, with this one that waited a couple of years to give the hardcore enthusiasts exactly what they want to sort of keep that uh, but haven't we, demand curve going. Haven't we had a weird market where we kind of got the competition M4 that other people had as an option as a standard? Like, Because in Germany you could get like seven different M4s, whereas here we got that one and then we got the CS. And then the Pure came to bolster the numbers, whereas I think overseas particularly the US and the bigger markets they always they always have these different specs. Yeah. and yeah. look we've proven that we just love to buy the best and most expensive always do. Yeah, so yeah. why not just yeah. Yeah. give us that and nothing else and given the price of this why would you keep the other one why would you keep the other spec yeah there's no point oh well, ultimately we are only because no one will buy it market yeah. as well. but no one will buy it oh yeah. well if I can if I don't want the pure if I can get the competition mm. can I say I think the wheels look crap Compared to the regular M2? Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, there's too many spokes. Just, and they don't have any dish. They just look... Yeah, like they do look a bit on wheels. special they this weekend. They do love the know, dish in the M2. Through, anyway. They're exquisite, aren't they? Nerd alert. The they, regular ones? Those look yep. a bit, you know, buy four, get one free. Sort <laughs> yeah, of in, yeah. in the, in the catalogue in your, in your letterbox. <laughs> well, maybe I've, yeah. I've bought a set of old BBS wheels to use for track tyres or something. Whack it on. I've got to say, I do secretly sure always read those catalogues. <laughs> you know, they're, they're one of the few pieces of junk mail that I actually I'm sure... Look I'm at those rims. I'm sure BMW will offer you many, many, many <laughs> wheel options. Of course. Yeah, all that's <laughs> true. Now, it gets bigger brakes though too. We should. Uh, oh, fantastic. Yes, well, they, they, were, they were part of the competition package. Yeah. But we get them as standard. Mm. Okay. Mm. Now, on the subject of German performance or German brands mm. with a performance flavour, uh, Porsche has released images and high-level spec of its next Macan. Ah. Macan. 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 Well, you know, we got a lot of feedback a, when uh, we've, ever, we've tested that car on how to pronounce that word. So, you know, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> is there a page I'm to show the, the viewers? Oh, there is, of there course. Is, Sorry, yes. Peter. That's all right. right. Yeah, oh, I'm just, just multitasking. Next time. And look at that aqua. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> That's quite a colour to so launch in, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So, for, for people so listening not on YouTube, we're now going to scroll through some images. For yeah. people on And we're just going to go silent and you have to imagine that. <laughs> well, if they're not on um, YouTube, they can... Yeah. yeah they so, silent. just just for those listening on at home, the, the new rear lights are something you need to look at because it does preview the new 911 yeah. as papped the other day at the yeah. ring. Yeah. Um, and that's also similar to the rear light treatment on the Panamera, Panamera. Sport Turismo. Yes. And yes. the 17 Boxster and Cayman. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so I it's all for what it's worth, I quite like it. Yeah, I like it too. Um, it's it's a seemingly quite nifty evolution of that whole Porsche mm. way of doing the tail Good demonstration of negative space to... Uh, mm. There is a lot of metal there, but I don't I mind it. Yeah, It's a bit yeah. stormtrooper when you start thinking about yeah. the negative space. Imagine yeah. it in white. True. Well, true. That'll look mm. the beast. Business, but the actually. original yeah. stormtrooper was the first Audi A1. Like yeah. That, oh, yeah. Putting pics of a Stormtrooper's helmet next to the A1, they were the same. And in fact, the little bladey bits on the Mustang's front bumper are out of, off Darth Vader's helmet. Ah, okay. Mm. Same as. Yeah. It's too many Star Wars references for one car podcast, I think. <laughs> so <laughs> I, think, I think one of the, uh, the biggest uh, stories with this car is that the interior, similar to the Focus by the sound of it, has been tidied up a bit, that it was a button fest inside. Mm. And... Uh, Strangely, I quite like that. Yeah, but I they were buttons big enough to hit people with yeah. a finger, whereas the the other one looked like Nana's button box had exploded sure. in a glue or factory. Or you dropped the jar of hundreds and thousands. <laughs> they just <laughs> everywhere. Because the, the Panamera and KN now, their interiors are relatively minimalist. You yeah, know? They, yeah, they went yeah. to quite a sleek look. This one's got a bigger screen. A lot of the functions that were handled by buttons have now been put into screens and things. That's the way it's going. I think they're doing a very good job. You can go too far, like Peugeot did with the the original 208, where it had two buttons and everything was in the really slow-moving screen. And the 308. And the 308. That seems to have gotten a little bit better in the 308 and the 3008, but yeah. But I think, you know, the JLR, when you think about uh, the Range Rover Velar, Mm -hmm. there's another name we copied over. Velar. 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 Yeah, Velar. (laughs) <laughs> and um, you say it backwards, rabble? Yeah. That, no, relax. But the, when you th- look at the interior of that car, I think it's beautiful. Mm. But it is like a Scandinavian furniture showroom. Yeah. You know, there's, so there's, it's like my house. There's nothing there. <clears throat> it, it's yeah. very minimalist. <laughs> Peter lives in a villa. <laughs> Not a villa. No, no. <laughs> I, I live in whatever the Volvo would be. <laughs> <laughs> so you're right. Yeah, you, can, you, can, you can possibly take it too far. And as always, it's to personal taste. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, but the, this McCann mm. seems to strike a reasonable balance between what was, uh, lots and lots of buttons and dials and sliders, to a lot less. And it didn't look old, did it? No, no. It did not. So probably the right time. Just when you think, you're, yeah, yeah, we're looking good, that's when you should move to replace the car now, you just know, and, and smarten it up. Apropos of nothing, this was revealed in Shanghai. Yeah, right. 
important. So very much about the Chinese market love an SUV. Too true. I wonder if there'll be a special, end. you know, version uh, with a, a, a long wheelbase one, version. One point five liter engine and <laughs> slight longer wheelbase. Well, you know, the Focus sedan. Just going back to the Focus, that is China only. Oh, really? For the moment. Okay. Interesting that it's not going to America because they still love a mm. sedan. Of yeah, 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 yeah. So mm. the, the, it's very much focused on the Chinese market. They do love a sedan in California. They love a sedan. Just lots of sedans. Well, it's where, where else are you going to put the? Where else are you going to put the boot full of Coke? In in Los Angeles. I don't know. Yeah. They Cola. love their Coca Cola and Fanta. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do- Dr Pepper Sprite. as well. Dr Pepper. <laughs> yeah. Seven Up. <laughs> All right. Now moving on. Mm. Speaking of cars and driving them. We should talk about what we've been driving mm. during this last week. Peter? I've had a Renault Colios. Fantastic. Which is, um, and many of you may know, a, a an X-Trail clone. Yep. So a lot of X-Trail underneath. Um, the petrol? Yes. I like Renaults. Yep. I'm not sure I like the Colios. Righto. Um, it's, it's very competent, very good. It rides really well. I, from memory, I think it rides better than the X-Trail. Mm. Um, and I think elements of the look are better than, certainly better than the X-Trail. I like the Renault look of it. Good interior space too. Very good interior space um, and very comfortable. I actually really like the cloth interior on it. Some, some cloth interiors are a bit rubbish. Some leather interiors are terrible. Uh, so it's very comfortable. Um, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, which I don't believe the X-Trail has. Um, and it's oh that terrible Nissan head unit uh, uh, better only by Toyota's terrible head unit because Renault's just knocked out this um, you know limited edition version yeah yeah um, the Colios S Colios S it sounds edition. a lot like N Sport <laughs> doesn't it <laughs> Funny, which is what Nissan uses <laughs> yes. uh, look I, I like the look of it I think it's uh, a very competent car but is, is it a Renault mm. right. Uh, it looks fantastic. It does, yeah. And I love the, the like DRLs. Yeah. Yeah. With, I think the, the feels like a Nissan comes from the CVT. And it probably means it'll live for 30 years, oh, it, being a Nissan. Absolutely. But um, I think it's made in Japan, isn't it? No, Korea. Korea. Yeah. Oh, well. Better okay. Strike prone France. That's not France, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although, having said that, the 208 won some JD Power Award today for dependability. So, Peugeots that are actually dependable? Who knew? Let's look up the definition of dependable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, power. speaking of dependable, Mel, mm. Mm. Uh, what have you been steering during speaking this of last power. week? Well, I kicked off uh, Thursday night, no, Friday night, with the Grand Cherokee Trackhawk on the road. Oh, hello. And, <laughs> yeah, James has driven it at Phillip Island. Didn't yep. get the chance to drive it on the road, suspiciously. Funny that would be. And yeah. can I say, the moment I pulled out onto the Cars Guide Test Track, which is Devonshire Street at the moment, because oh. it's... Have it's an all, it? all terrain challenge. Not the cr- not the track hawk, but I've driven a hard car down. I've driven a Lamborghini Huracan Performante down that road. Wow. Yeah. With the nose lifter up. Does it have home. a nose lift kit? It does. <laughs> thank, thank goodness. Otherwise, yeah. it would have ripped yeah. the front off it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's a it's a road work zone, and it's probably the roughest bit of bitumen I've ever experienced. <laughs> but the track hawk. Wow. I think it's got four. You know, concrete uh, blocks. <laughs> well, no, it's had logs of wood and springs. <laughs> wow. But you know. You can only do so much with, well, with an old platform physics. like that by shoving in 522 kilowatts <laughs> worth of supercharged 6.2 litre V8. Uh, so, yeah, you need to make it work. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a bit rough on the road. Yeah, but, I mean, I think that car's primary job is, hello, friends, get in this new car I've just bought. Yeah. Stand by. I'm going to go from zero to 100 in an eye blink. Yeah. Wow, everyone cheers. Great. Job done. Park Everybody it. Put loves it in the garage. that stuff. Straight That's to the yeah. servo. That's it. It's yeah, straight to the server. I think it's 3.4 seconds, 0 to 100. It's yeah. 3.7. And, and people really love that. I mean, I don't know about you, but I take people on joyrides in fast cars and they don't care about the cornering, even though that's actually the most fun. No. But when you when you stomp on the throttle of a car that can do a sub four seconds, 0 to 100, yeah. people are either rendered silent, yeah. really emotional, like crying emotional, or <laughs> lots of swearing. And it's they really learn fun. learn how to say the F word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can yeah. I say this thing? Reaction to your right foot from idle is second to <laughs> nothing bar. Well, it's supercharged, right? Well, that's a supercharger yeah. for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, supercharged yeah. Supercharged, big capacity. It just goes it a whoosh yes. And it sounds great. Yeah. And being so far off the ground, the, the perception of acceleration is yeah. just epic. There's some wonderfully obnoxious cars coming, like the F-Pace SVR with similar kind of yeah. thing. That's going to be a lot of fun too. Yeah. And I, I, I've, a weakness, I've got a weakness for a big obnoxious fast Very SUVs. Good. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. nice. Well, during the last week, I went from steering that Merc AMG to then coming home and getting into a Ford Mustang. So it was a <laughs> GT. So GT. So it's a five-liter yeah, yeah, uh, GT. Yeah. And the thing, 
Mal said to me, okay, I want you to do a kind of audio test on fire up and driving them around, which one's louder, the, the C63S or the Mustang? I reckon they're about the same they're in terms loud. of decibels. Which <laughs> speaks volumes. But, which, which is quite loud. Yeah. The thing is, though, with the naturally aspirated engine, there's just no torque. Yeah. There's not as much torque. You get so spoiled by that beautiful mm. twin turbo setup, short distance from inlet to outlet to the turbos in the middle of the yeah, V, yeah, yeah. and it just is instantaneous. I think you'll find the uh, the phrase for that is hot side inside. Hot in the hot V. Yep. Yeah. So that is a big difference for me. Mm-hmm. It's also a hundred thousand dollars worth of yeah, difference. That's right. but, <laughs> but having said that, <laughs> yeah. the uh, I drove the Stinger GT again this week, back to back with a Mustang. Nice. Yes. Oh boy, the Stinger. It's it's a special machine. The responsiveness of that oh, twin cool. turbo. Oh, is, that's good. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes. I mean, this the one I drove had the optional exhaust, the bimetal exhaust. It just sounds like a Commodore with an exhaust Commodore V6. Wow. Uh, it doesn't sound great, but it's just a nice. Oh, drive. I like a sleeper. Well, the funny thing was going. So don't get the exhaust. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just it, make the most of no noise. Hot tip, kids. Going from the Mustang to our long-term Volkswagen Golf R wagon. Mm. I really like that car. It's special. It's isn't a it? really, really great car. I love a wagon. I'm, I'm more in the wagon camp than I am the SUV camp, mm, which mm. is sad because oh. these days no, no, I, it's I, a fairly I'm unbalanced I like set the of wagons. Scales. Yeah, uh, but that Golf R. I do remember driving a Golf R wagon last year in Germany up to high 200s with five people on board in Germany and it was just solid as. I'm just going to take your pulse because that means you're dead. No, we yeah. had no, no. It was up to V Max on that car, <laughs> and. It had the special kit so that you can mm, go yeah. higher on a top speed. And someone in an old M-class Merc kind of pulled <laughs> out of the middle lane. Just, lane. Whoa, and dynamically it reacted really well, braked beautifully, stayed stable. It was not a drama. Yeah. Uh, really fantastic car. And yet it handles the Cars Guide Test Track, Devonshire Street. Yep. Beautifully. That as well. And it's on 19-inch wheels. Yeah. It's a light car. Really like it. And it's a sleeper. Yeah. It's a real Q car. And ours is white. So Yeah. It just looks, it looks like, like any like other golf. A regular golf from front on. Yeah, love that. Uh, but I've, I've had my whole family and I've had two babies in it. I've had all You've the You've had business. two babies in it? Wow. You didn't make it to the hospital. <laughs> That's amazing. It took it's a long time to get to the hospital. It That's going to be a clean-up job. Yeah. <laughs> have to hose <laughs> that it's dark around. interior. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, but it's it's a, it's a real all-rounder. That it thing. is. It's a nice. My car. long-term cone is about to go back. That rides really well too. Doesn't go as fast. Okay. Mm. But the the gearbox, the 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 VW has really over the years developed its dual clutch gearbox so well. That new seven speed. Yeah. Yeah. That I've only driven in an Audi. And it's excellent. Yeah. With the Golf R spec two liter, I think it works really yeah. well. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Not so much with the I had it in the Tiguan uh-huh. 132 TSI. It felt sluggish. Right. But it's calibrated really well on the Golf There, there R, used to be such a, a large disparity between just normal mode and putting it into sport. Yeah. Normal mode wasn't enough. Sport was too much. Yeah. In this car anyway, and I take your point about it being the R, it's Sport is great mm. around town. Sport is a really nice drive. Mm. The, the gearbox picks up quickly the whole bit. Well, let's face it. They've got a lot of data on that gearbox now. It's yeah. in everything. It doesn't go into that uh, frustrating paralysis if you ever braked and accelerated at the same time. So people that happened to, in autos like <laughs> yeah, to left yeah, foot yeah. brake were constantly, oh, my God, I'm going nowhere. Mm. This car has had a meltdown. That sounds yeah. like self-protection mode. Maybe. They're probably building them tough enough. These yeah. Days. Yeah. So have we heard about the Kona though? Have you oh, talked right, about go the Kona ahead. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've had I'm just about at the end of six months with the Kona, yeah, and, and it's which the active with safety pack. From active memory? with safety pack, six speed auto. It's a very good car. So the two liter, two liter. Uh, uh, yeah, I reckon drive. the reason everyone buys the active is because I reckon it's probably the best one. It's the best. It doesn't um, look like the base one, does it? No, no. Well, none of them do. Yeah, yeah. So it's got alloys. It's got uh, the safety pack is excellent. It's never. I don't think it's ever done anything stupid like mm. you know the previous car previous long turbo i had was the forest it was constantly screaming at us so we ended up turning off the the safety system because it just drove us nuts whereas um the kona not only does it have lane keep assist it's actually a very subtle one it doesn't scream at you it just gently steers you back away from the edge of the lane uh, and you can switch it off um but as a car it has coped with um, our constant moving feast of furniture and Great. gardening and the, the the lane assist when you say switch it off is it just the button just a button yeah same yep. on Santa Fe yep. which is good no you don't around. have to dig into mm. menus and yep. all that it's great I yep. think one of the reasons why the Kona is so good is that it's compared to the CX three which is closer to a two yeah the Kona is is an i thirty no it's not jacked up i thirty and yep. the i thirty is a brand new platform and all the bits inside it are brand new all the controls mm. and multimedia etc brand new. 
chassis. Big uh, step ahead from the old car, the yeah. i30. I mean, I've had four i30s in the last couple of months. You've been and driving then, a lot of cars, Peter. Every, <laughs> all at once. And every time you get into the i30, you think to yourself, how does it get better than this? Like, what car is better than this mm. in this segment? And there aren't many. Talking it's about none. driving cars. It's a safe choice, isn't it? Yeah, driving yeah. multiple cars at once. I once worked with a fellow who said he absolutely had to get two cars from one little village that he was in in South Australia to the next one. No way. No one else. No trailers. No nothing. So he got in one car, drove it a few hundred metres up the road, <laughs> came back, got in the other car, drove it a few hundred metres past the one that he'd just driven, <laughs> came back, got that one, and did that kind of leapfrog thing uh, for kilometres after kilometres. Uh, so he got the job that. done. It took a while. I bet he was fit at the end. <laughs> anyway, speaking of the end, <laughs> I think we have reached the finish line. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. And thank you, Mel. Thank you, James. It's been a pleasure. And okay. thanks to our producer, Marsden, for his epic work on the mixing desk and behind the camera. We argue occasionally and sometimes I feel like agreeing with him, but then we'd both be wrong. <laughs> Thank you for listening and please give us your thoughts on anything we've discussed today. Search for Cars Guide on Facebook and Instagram and use the hashtag CG Podcast or email us at comments at carsguide.com.au. You can listen to and watch us on YouTube and if you're an iTunes devotee, please rate and review us. Thanks for your thoughts, Steve Jones. We're putting the screen to good use so let us know what you think. Steve, Steve. let us know on, on YouTube and cool. said, why don't you use the screen behind you to illustrate some of the things you're chatting about. Good call, Steve. So we gave it a crack. Thanks, Steve. Let's, um, let us know what you think, uh, Steve and anyone else. Um, I hope you can join us next week. Until then, two fish in a tank. One says to the other, do you know how to drive this thing? <laughs> Hit subscribe. <laughs>